Understanding cost accounting, cost, volume, profit analysis continued. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed here. And you'll see our link to YouTube, our YouTube channel, at the end of the presentation. We started talking about fixed and variable costs in the prior um, video we showed you, and there's more on that here. Let's go with an example. Assume Bob manages a Levi's factory that makes blue jeans. Let's go back to our definition of variable costs. Costs incurred that vary in direct proportion to changes in level of activity. In this case, activity means production. The more jeans you produce, the more variable costs you're going to incur. But let's be specific about two variable costs. First, direct labor. Joe's an employee who runs a showing, sewing machine. Each pair of jeans requires 10 minutes of Joe's time. And as a hint, think about the auto business, what's going on in the auto industry. One of the reasons that GM, Chrysler, and Ford have had trouble making money is they have very high labor costs in comparison with companies overseas. And those costs aren't only salary, but they're also benefits, vacation, pension, and the big problem for the American auto companies is health care health costs, particularly to retirees. The other variable cost we're talk about, we'll talk about here is direct material. Each pair of jeans in our example requires four square feet of denim material. Now you can relate direct costs and direct material. Direct cost is normally incurred to do something with the material that you buy, in this case to cut and sew the denim. So when you go out and you buy a bunch of stuff, a bunch of materials, you're going to have to have some labor to do something with those materials. Now both direct material and direct labor are, are affected. They increase and they decrease based on a cost driver. Something's causing you to incur these variable costs, direct material and direct labor. That activity or event is called a cost driver. For the tax accountant, it would be the number of tax returns prepared for example. For Levi's, it's the number of jeans produced. So now let's throw in a fixed cost. If Bob, the manager, didn't open the factory for one day, what costs would he incur? In other words, what costs are not related to the number of jeans he produces? This has to do with costs incurred with the passage of time. Levi's incurs utility costs even if the factory is closed. They have to heat and cool it. They have to have some lighting on, probably for security reasons. Think about your own house when you're on vacation. You incur some utility costs. You incur interest on your car loan every day. Levi's is going to incur interest expense on loans that they have outstanding every day, just like you do. I want to switch gears here and... show an Excel spreadsheet that relates some of these costs that we talked about. So here's the first one. We have variable costs, the $10 per pair on the vertical axis, and across the bottom we have all the blue jeans that were produced at various levels. And look what's happening. As in blue, the blue bar along the bottom, the number of jeans we produce increases, starting out at 500, 1,000, 1,500, and increasing. The dark purple bar, the total variable costs increases. So total variable costs increase with the number of jeans we produce. More jeans, more variable costs in total. In total. But our fixed costs are different. With our fixed costs, the purple bar, it stays constant regardless of the number of genes we produce. So the genes can go up, they can go down, it doesn't matter. That variable, that fixed cost, that $10,000 stays the same. For each pair of Levi's produced, we said in our example, direct labor, $5 a pair, direct materials, $5 a pair. We're paying Joe the direct labor costs, we're paying the material cost for the denim for a total of $10 a pair. The fixed costs, we'll say their utilities for the factory and the interest on the loan are $10,000 a month. 
So when you go back to our example, our variable costs in total increase with number of genes produced. But our fixed costs stay, stay the same regardless of the number of genes produced. Now that's in total. We're going to see in a later slide that the cost per unit is different. That's the end of part two of cost accounting. You'll find part three on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. For live tutoring and chat sessions with ACT, math, and accounting, stl.net is our website. Here's our email and our phone number, and we'll see you next time.